Now, we need to talk a little bit about justification before we look at Thomas Aquinas. What is justification? This, my friends, was the debate, the debate at the Protestant Reformation. This is Martin Luther's rally cry. Luther himself loved Romans. In chapter 3, he changed it to say by faith alone. The Greek does not say alone. It says by faith. So Martin Luther, the heretic, changed the Bible to conform to his false teaching. But justification is a Latin term, justificatio, and it means to make just, to make righteous. Justification. Now, Martin Luther and John Calvin and the Protestant Reformers, they all said justification is a Latin corruption. The original Greek means to be declared righteous, to be imputed with righteousness. What does that mean? Being declared or imputed means that you're not really righteous. It's like declaring someone a millionaire. I'm declaring you to be a millionaire, but you're not a millionaire. But everyone has to treat you as a millionaire because I, in this case, God, says, I say you are a millionaire, even though you're not. It's called a legal fiction. But this is the theology of Martin Luther. Martin Luther actually believed this and taught this. He believed that we're all sinners and that God, in a way, sends and we kind of take our envelope with our sins written on them and we mail that to God. And then God sends us an envelope and we open it and it says, congratulations, you're righteous. And we can take this piece of paper and we can frame it and put it on the wall. But in reality, for Luther and for the Protestant Reformation, they didn't believe in an inward transformation that was required they also didn't believe that charity had to perfect faith. So you could be the nastiest, worst sinner in the world, but God declared you righteous. That is Lutheran theology. And all you have to do to, in a way, receive the envelope from God that says, congratulations, you're a millionaire. Congratulations, you're justified. All you have to do is make an act of faith. Faith alone. You don't have to do any good works. You don't have to help grandma across the street. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to go to church. Now, they say you should, but you don't have to. Now, the Council of Trent came back at Luther and said, no, no, no. What happens is, is God is in the business of renovation. So, when we come into Christ through the sacrament of baptism by faith, hope, and charity... What Yes, we are disgusting. We are sinners. But what God does is God actually transforms. He makes a new creation in Christ. God doesn't want filth in heaven. He wants to transform us and make us into, as we say in the Catholic Church, saints. So in the Catholic doctrine, there is justification by which we are made righteous, but it's linked to to the journey of sanctification, that is the process of being made holy, or you might even say the process of me being made a sanctus or a sancta, a saint. Now, back to Pope Francis. He says that Christ died for everyone. He died for atheists. He died for people in other religions. Therefore, everyone is justified. And we've seen Paul says you can see it right there to the um to the uh, your left of my head verse 18 therefore as by the offense of one unto all men to condemnation so also by the justice of one unto all men to justification of life is paul teaching what francis appears to be teaching is saint paul teaching universalism i mean think about it when Adam sinned, there were no exceptions except for Our Lady and Christ, but he's the second person in the Trinity. There were no exceptions. So someone could argue, well, when Christ died on the cross, his death was so powerful that there are no exceptions. Just as there's no exceptions with Adam, there's no exceptions with Christ. And so we can come along like Balthazar or Bishop Barron and say, dare we hope that all be saved? It seems so. 
because of the parallelism that's made in Romans 5. Pope Francis himself is drawing on this parallelism in chapter 5 of Romans. Okay, well, in traditional Catholic theology, here's the answer. Grace has sufficiency and it has efficiency. There is effective grace and sufficient grace. I'm going to put a quote up here. This is from St. Thomas Aquinas, from his commentary, 1 Timothy. By the way, St. Thomas Aquinas has the best commentaries. Can't say that enough. Please get them. One of my prized possessions in my house, I should have brought it up here. It's downstairs in, in the library. Uh, last year, I got a, uh, I think it's 17th century folio edition, Latin edition of Thomas Aquinas's commentaries on St. Paul. It's a beautiful book. Um, but this comes from the commentaries of Aquinas on, on St. Paul. This is 1 Timothy. And he says, Thomas Aquinas, he is the propitiation for our sins, for some efficaciously, but for all sufficiently, because the price of his blood is sufficient for the salvation of all, but it has the efficacy except for the elect because of an impediment. Okay, so... Sufficient and efficacious. Here's an example. I have 10 friends. They get in trouble. They're in jail. I go down to the jail. I pay the bail for all 10 men. Was my payment sufficient for all 10 men to be brought out of jail? Yes. Then the police officer goes in there and says, congratulations, Taylor came, you paid your bail, y'all can go. Five of my friends get up and walk out. Five say, no, we like it here. We're going to stay. Now, was the payment that I made for the 10 men in jail sufficient to free all 10 men? Yes. You might even say, you could use the language, Taylor came and freed 10 of his friends. You could use that language. But now we have to look at the efficacious outcome of the act. Five of the 10 men put up what Thomas Aquinas here calls impediment. They said, no, I'm not leaving. That, that was nice that he, he paid the price. But actually, I kind of like the food here and I'm going to stay in prison. That is the distinction that Thomas Aquinas is making between efficacious grace and sufficient grace. So we as Catholics say that Christ died for everyone. We can even say with St. Paul in Romans 5, Christ justified everyone. But that justification is not efficacious unless the person receives it by faith. Unless the person has love for God in Christ. Unless the person conforms himself to the teachings of Jesus Christ and the apostles. Unless that person lives by faith and works. All of this is to say, unless that person becomes a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ to the very last breath.